Hello everyone. We need to wind the toy with the key and then it moves by itself. How? Well, there is a spring inside such toys. When we wind it with key, the spring gets twisted and tightened. That change of shape requires doing some work. And we did some work on the spring, so it gains some energy. Also, when you stretch a rubber band, you do some work on it, right? And because of that, the band gains some energy. If you release it, the rubber band itself comes back to its original state. And what happens in the case of a bow and an arrow? When we stretch the string of a bow, it gains some energy. That's why when we release it, it returns to its original state very fast and applies a great force on the arrow. Not only change of shape, an object can gain energy because of change of position too. When we lift an object, we do some work against the gravitational pull. And because of this, the object gains some energy. Thus, an object possesses energy by virtue of its position and configuration. And this energy is called potential energy. You know, an object increases its energy when raised through a height. Why? Now, whenever we lift some object, we do work against gravity, which leads to increase of energy in the object and it is called gravitational potential energy. So remember, the gravitational potential energy of an object at a point above the ground is defined as the work done in raising it from the ground to that point against gravity. Thus, an object in a given position can have a certain potential energy with respect to one level and a different value and a different value of potential energy with respect to another level. Now, you may like to find out how much energy an object gains when we lift it. Let us see. It is really easy to find how much energy an object gains when we lift it. For example, we lifted an object with mass m to height h from the ground. Here, the minimum force required to raise the object is equal to the weight of the object. And weight of the object, as we know, is mg. So, force is equal to mg and the object gains energy equal to the work done on it. So here, displacement is equal to h. Let the work done on an object against gravity is equal to w. Now, w is equal to force into displacement. So, it becomes mg into h. And this is the potential energy of the object Hence, we write Ep is equal to mgh. In case of work done, the important thing to remember is the work done by gravity depends on the difference in vertical heights of the initial and final position of the object. It does not depend on the path along which the object is moved. So, here we see a blue box and an orange box which are moved from position A to position B. And what do we see? They both require the same amount of the work to be done when raised from position A to B by taking two different paths as shown by the arrow. So, the blue box follows the straight path but the orange box doesn't follow the straight path. Now, Assuming they both have the same mass m and the height ab is equal to h, then in both the situations, the work done on the object is mgh. So to sum up, what is potential energy? It is the energy possessed by a body due to its change in position or shape. As we saw in the case of stretched rubber band and 
the gravitational potential energy of an object at a point above the ground is defined as the work done in raising it from the ground to that point against gravity. That was all about potential energy. Bye-bye.